In this video we are going to look at a class of maps called covering transformations which enable us to relate different covering spaces of the same space. So given uh, two covering spaces P1 going from Y1 to X and P2 going from Y2 to X the same base um, a covering transformation F from Y1 P1 to Y2 P2 is a continuous map uh, F from Y1 to Y2 such that it commutes with the two projections In other words, if I go along F and then along P2, that's the same as just going down P1. Now a covering transformation is called a covering isomorphism. If this map is also a homeomorphism. So a covering isomorphism is covering transformation F which is also a homeomorphism so this allows us to say when two covering spaces are essentially the same we can say they're isomorphic in other words there is a covering isomorphism that relates them and it also lets us talk about the symmetries of a covering space so um, the deck group of a covering space is the group deck y p of all covering isomorphisms from yp to itself in other words automorphisms of the covering space yp so we should think of the deck group as consisting of symmetries of the covering space The reason for the name deck group is that another name for covering isomorphism is a deck transformation. So the deck group is the group of all deck transformations. So now I want to give you uh, a result which tells you algebraically how to check if two covering spaces are the same or how to check if there is a covering transformation relating one to the other. So the theorem let P1 and P2 be covering spaces Suppose you're given um, or let X be a point in X and let Y1 uh, be in P1 inverse X, so that's a point in Y1, and Y2 be a point in P2 inverse X, that's a point in Y2. Then there exists. A covering transformation F from Y1 P1 to Y2 P2 uh, with F of Y1 
equals y2 of the point little y1 little y2 um, if and only if a certain algebraic condition holds which says that uh, p1 star of pi 1 y1 base a little y1 that's a subscript 1 there uh, is a subgroup of p2 star pi 1 y2 y2 so both of these are subgroups of pi 1 of x based at x and you're just taking loops in y1 pushing them down to x loops in y2 and pushing them down to x and so this is saying if any loop based at little y1 lifts to a loop based at little y2 then you get a covering transformation moreover if there exists such a covering transformation it's unique it's uniquely determined by this condition that it sends y1 to y2 so as a consequence of this you can see that um, Binary. there's a covering isomorphism between y1 and y2 if and only if these two subgroups p1 star pi1 y1 y1 and p2 star pi1 y2 y2 are equal as subgroups of pi1 x okay so how do we prove this theorem well proof of the theorem I claim it follows immediately from the lifting criterion the general criterion for lifting maps So to see why that is, I just have to draw a picture really. So let's think of y2 as this covering space and let's draw the covering map y1 goes to x horizontally. So what is a covering transformation? It's a map from y1 to y2 such that this diagram commutes so that p2 compose f equals p1 so that's exactly a lift of p1 so a covering map or sorry covering transformation f from y1 p1 to y2 p2 is exactly precisely a lift of p1 to the covering space y2 so then the existence follows as soon as we have this condition that we wrote down last time and uniqueness follows from uniqueness of lifts so we already know this theorem we just have to have it pointed out to us so let's just uh, do an example let's set x to be the circle and let's take um, y1 again to be the circle y2 to be the circle and let's suppose that they're covering the circle 
via the projection which is uh, Z in the unit complex numbers maps to uh, Z to the M and this one Z maps to Z to the N so the question is when is there a covering transformation from Y1 to Y2 well let's look at our criterion we need to look at the push forward of the fundamental group of this guy down here and see when that's a subgroup of the push forward of the fundamental group of this guy down here so uh, this is P1 this is P2 P1 star pi 1 y1 I'm not going to specify a base point because everything's uh, abelian all the fundamental groups are abelian it doesn't matter um, P1 star of this group which is the integers uh, is going to be the group of integers divisible by m inside all integers which is pi 1 of x and p2 star of pi 1 y2 which is again the integers is just going to consist of integers divisible by n so when are the integers divisible by m also divisible by n well that happens if and only if n divides m right if I got that the right way around yeah for example if m is 6 and n is 2 Right, then this is the integers divisible by 6 and that's certainly a subgroup of the even integers so uh, if n divides m then there exists a covering transformation f from y1 to y2 that we can stick here Interestingly, in this, this example, let's, let's just have a look at it. We have the map Z goes to Z to the 6. We have the map Z goes to uh, Z squared. So I've got one too many arrows there. And what I'm saying is that we can write a map going from here to here such that this map is the composition of these two so what do I have to put here I have to put Z goes to Z cubed right because if I do Z cubed first and then Z squared I get Z to the 6 so that's our covering transformation well, that's one of our covering transformations this is the one that sends the point 1 to 1 Right. If I wanted the covering transformation that sent 1 to uh, minus 1, uh, what would I do? I would take uh, minus z cubed. And that would still be a covering transformation because if I do minus z cubed squared, I still get z to the 6. So these are two possible covering transformations. Um, one is the one that sends the number 1 to the number 1, and the other is the one that sends the number 1 to the number minus 1. And that's it, because that, that's all we can get, because 1 has to go somewhere. It has to go to one of the pre-images of the number 1 under the map P2, which is z goes to z squared, and the pre-images of one under the map z goes to z squared of plus or minus one so there are only these two possibilities and the covering transformation is uniquely determined by where the point one goes okay something to note is this map here z goes to z cubed is again a covering map and that's a general feature so that's the next thing we're going to prove So, a covering transformation is 
is a covering map. Right, so this is uh, slightly confusing because the words map and transformation we often think of as meaning the same thing. Covering map, remember, is really like the map associated to a covering space. And a covering transformation is something that relates to different covering spaces. So what this is saying is if you have two covering spaces of x, y1 and y2, which are related by a covering transformation, then actually y1 is a covering space of y2. So all of the maps in this diagram are covering maps. Just like here we had z goes to z to the 6, z goes to z cubed and z goes to z squared. They're all covers of the circle by the circle. Okay, let's prove this theorem. First off, um, each point x in x has an elementary neighbourhood Uh, for P1, let's let's say U1. That's, remember that means a, a neighbourhood over which you can define local inverses for this covering map. And an elementary neighbourhood U2 for P2, so you can define local inverses over U2 for P2. Um, so U1 intersect U2 has it has um, local inverses for both. Uh, so if we call this U, sorry, my handwriting is becoming really bad. Uh, so if we call this U, this is simultaneously an elementary neighbourhood for P1 and for P2. At this point, I realize I, I need to um, add in a hypothesis. So hopefully that'll become clear why in a second. I need to assume y2 is connected. Let's say path connected. OK, so why is that? Well, it's going to be my proof that f is a surjective map. It's going to use this fact that it's path connected. So uh, f is surjective. So how do I prove that? Um, here's y1, here's y2, and here's x. I'm going to pick a point y1 here. I'm going to pick a point y2 here. I want to find a pre-image under f, under this covering transformation for y2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map y1 over here. So I get some point. I'm going to map y1 down here uh, I get p1 y1 and I'm going to map y2 down here as well because y2 is path connected I can draw a path here connecting f y1 to y2 and I can project that down this covering map to get a path uh, P2 compose alpha connecting PY1, sorry, P1Y1 to P2Y1. Then I can use path lifting for P1 to get a path starting at Y1. So this path, I guess, is. Uh, P2 composed alpha tilde. I'm lifting it up P1. And I get another point here, which I'll call, I don't know, Z. And finally, I will map this guy using F forwards to uh, Y2. And I get another path which, st which starts again at F of Y1 get another path. So this is F composed P2 composed alpha tilde. 
but now I want to show that this guy, this red line here, is actually equal to this blue guy, which will show the endpoints agree, which will say that y2 is f of z. That's the idea. So y is the red line, the blue line the same? Well, because they're both lifts of the same path. So if I project the red path down here, I get P2 compose F compose P2 compose alpha tilde. Where? Lots of uh, composers there. Okay, so P2 compose F is this composition. That's the same as just doing P1. So this is P1 compose P2 compose alpha tilde. This tilde meant that I was lifting P2 compose alpha, this blue path downstairs to a path along P1. So this composition is just P2 compose alpha. Right, I lift and then I project back down again. So in other words, this red path here agrees with this blue path in X here. So this red path in Y2 and this blue path in Y2, these are both lifts of the same path, P2 compose alpha. And they start at the same point, so they must agree by uniqueness of lifts. That tells us that this point the end point of this red path, which is f of z, agrees with the end point of this blue path, which is y2. So overall we get f of z equals y2. That shows that f is surjective because I picked our y2 completely arbitrarily and I constructed a pre-image. So what have I got? I've got that F is a surjective map and I've got an elementary open neighborhood for both covering maps of any point in X. So I need to put all of this together to show that this map F is a covering map. So finally we need to show F is a covering map. So let me draw the spaces up again, y1, y2, x. I fix a point y2. I want to find an elementary neighborhood for y2 with a local inverse going up to y1. And there's a local inverse for f. So what do I do? I project down p2. I get to some point x. I take some elementary neighborhood U, which is an elementary neighborhood simultaneously for P1 and P2. And then for any Y1 in the pre-image F inverse of Y2, which is not empty, right? I've just proved that F is a surjective map. So any point here has some pre-image. Um, I can take the elementary sheet V for the, the covering map P1 living over U and containing Y1, right? So over the, the uh, open set U, there's a bunch of open sets V1, V2, V3, etc., um, containing the different pre-images of X. These are the elementary sheets. And I can also take uh, an elementary sheet, maybe I'll call it W over, over that U. For the covering map P2. So that's the one containing Y2. So what I want to do is to define a map for 
it goes this way, which is a local inverse for f that sends w to v. How do I get such a map? Well, I already have a map going from u to v, which is the local inverse for p1. So all I need to do is first map down via p2 from w to u, and then map back up again to v using q. So this goes from w to u to v. This is a local inverse. Okay, and I can do this for all the different elementary sheets and I get that this map is a covering map.